I recently had the privilege of attending the 2023 MediaTech Summit in picturesque Laguna Niguel, California. This annual gathering stands as a beacon for tech analysts and journalists, offering an exclusive glimpse into MediaTech's mission, technological prowess, and strategic vision. At the heart of the summit were MediaTek's ambitious strides in the smartphone arena, notably showcased through the groundbreaking Dimensity 9300. As the company's latest offering, it underscores MediaTek's commitment to redefining performance standards within the ever-evolving smartphone category. Additionally, the summit unveiled a promising collaboration with MediaTek and Meta joining forces on custom silicon for the future of augmented and virtual reality glasses. Beyond the realm of handheld devices, MediaTek's unwavering dedication to innovation extends to smart cars and electric vehicles, affirming their position as trailblazers, shaping the future of technology. The summit not only illuminated the present, but also hinted at a future where MediaTek continues to push boundaries and pioneer advancements across diverse technological landscapes. And while there was disappointingly no news about whether MediaTek might get into the PC space to join the growing list of companies with ARM-based solutions, I was also quite impressed with Rick Tsai, MediaTek's CEO, who personally took me aside to spend some one-on-one -on -one time to explain the company's thinking should MediaTek decide to get into that space. What follows here are some interesting interviews with MediaTek's exec team, as well as some of the most prominent journalists and analysts in the tech space with their views on the event. In short, it was a terrific event and informative on multiple levels. Hi, I'm Vince Hu, and I'm Corporate Vice President for MediaTek. I have two roles at the company. I run strategic marketing and report to the CEO. And I'm also general manager for our computing businesses at MediaTek. Oh, uh, uh, you know, we had a great day, uh, first day for Executive Summit. And it included uh, showcasing our six major growth areas, which include uh, broadband, IoT, automotive, uh, the metaverse slash spatial computing, uh, and also our continued growth in um, uh, the 5G market and uh, thin modems. Uh, and so we're very excited about our growth prospects. I think one of the things you'll see is MediaTek will be a completely different company uh, five years from now than what it is today. Our mobile business continues to grow, but our other businesses beyond mobile are growing even, even faster. And so you'll see a uh, probably more than half of our business uh, in the non-mobile areas, even though we're very bullish about our growth in 5G. Well, uh, there's, uh, there's a couple of really great highlights that we had from uh, today. One of them was we introduced a partnership with Meta for the development of next generation AR glasses. Uh, and we had a special guest, uh, Jean Beauferhat, who is VP of Silicon Engineering at Reality Labs, join us. I think one of the other highlights that we had today was also recapping the announcement of our partnership with NVIDIA in automotive. And with that partnership, we're going to be able to create an entire lineup of cockpit and IVI solutions that'll be the best in the industry in terms of AI and GPU capability here. I can't think of a better way to differentiate our products in automotive than to partner with the industry's best graphics provider in NVIDIA. And one of the things that we'll also be adding to our, uh, uh, as value to our automotive customers is we'll be leveraging the Drive OS software that NVIDIA has invested in. And that means we're also going to be able to leverage their ecosystem of solution providers in creating complete solutions for automotive OEMs. So hi, I'm Van Bar Moynihan. I'm the Vice President of Corporate Marketing here at MediaTek, speaking to you from our Executive Summit at the beautiful Ritz-Carlton in Laguna Niguel. And we were talking a lot at the summit about AI and how it's really impacting the industry, but I think more importantly, MediaTek's uh, overall business. We're extremely focused on, on AI. 
MediaTek as a supplier of over like two billion devices a year, I think we're uniquely positioned to deploy or help enable the deployment of AI at the edge. And we believe strongly that for AI, and particularly the new generative AI techniques to scale at volume, they are going to require implementation at the edge on device. So whether it's smartphones, TVs, automotive, IoT, industrial, across a whole host of our applications, we're seeing significant um, deployment of, of AI. More interestingly, I think we also last week launched our new mobile flagship solution, the Dimensity 9300, and that really brings a new level of AI acceleration uh, on device for us, doubling the AI performance over last year's flagship solution, but more importantly, adding a lot of on-chip capability to support generative AI applications. Large language models, 7 billion, 13 billion, all the way up to 33 billion parameters, stable diffusion at under a second, and a whole host of new applications that we believe are going to be created based on this. And you can imagine that this technology is going to scale into other segments of our business, into other product lines as we, uh, as we look forward. The other area that we focused on uh, uh, and made some announcements at the summit was around REDCap, where we launched our REDCap technology and our REDCap products. Now, REDCap stands for Reduced Capability, and it's essentially the 5G solution for mobile IoT. So today we have, you know, broadband 5G solutions that can deliver gigabit per second for high-end applications. 5G fixed wireless, CPE devices, 5G connected PCs. But there's a whole host of applications, smart watches, wearables, AR, VR glasses, but also entry data devices, smart city, smart camera, surveillance, and a whole host of IoT applications that need something that is smaller, lower power consumption, lower cost, um, and can support hundreds of megabits per second of data rates. And that's where REDCap fits, because today those applications are being served by older 3G and 4G LTE solutions. And as 5G networks evolve to the next stage, which is 5G standalone architecture, or a pure 5G network, REDCap is the solution for these uh, solutions. So we launched our solutions uh, at the summit today. They're going to be available uh, sampling to customers early next year. They're going to go commercial samples at the end of 2024. So I think in that time frame, we'll see those devices deployed uh, probably in the consumer space first. Hello, I am Ben Beharin, CEO and Principal Analyst at Creative Strategies. MediaTek's had an interesting event. Most interesting to me was a couple of things. One, that the Dimensity 9300 is the first ARM V9 processor. Very excited to see ARM V9 be adopted. Tight collaboration with ARM in order to use a bunch of their IP. Also a lot of big cores in that product, so it's obviously performing very well. Um, but the most interesting thing to me, which is also interestingly probably the less less attractive of their businesses from a public standpoint is their semi-custom ASIC work. We've known that for a while the, the custom ASIC business is growing in the age of AI, uh, really needed in terms of companies that collaborate with in order to make these custom ASICs. There's not a lot of places you can go to if you have ambitions to design your own processors. A lot of companies now trying to design their own processor, whether they're automotive, data center, um, all the way down to, to, to client devices. So huge collaboration there. Meta announced they were partnering on that for the next generation AR glasses, which I thought was really interesting, and a result of, of MediaTek's ability to create more custom processors. So really good business. We think that's a big one. Um, like I said, may not be the most interesting, but a, a lot of money going to custom ASICs. Hi, this is Avi Greengard. I'm a, from Tech Exponential, and I'm here at the MediaTek Executive Summit. Some of the things that uh, we're seeing here are pretty exciting, particularly around growth opportunities for MediaTek. The ASIC business is, uh, is actually quite big uh, today. Um, they, they sold over a, a billion ASICs. So that's, an ASIC is a chip that can be programmed to do a lot of different things. And MediaTek's business model here is work with different companies to do different things that meet their needs. So we're seeing things like Sony putting these chips in the PSVR 2's 
controllers. We're seeing Juniper networks uh, use giant chips, not small ones. That <laughs> the chip was bigger than the side of of the controller. That that that. So these are very different uh, chips for very very different purposes and so that, that was an exciting uh, part of MediaTek's business to dive into and learn and see how uh, it's growing and one of those opportunities is actually with Meta in a and some future AR glasses are going to be built around MediaTek chips that are co-designed and co-developed with Meta's silicon design team apparently meta has a silicon design team uh, and with mediatek so uh, you may think of mediatek as the company that is in a lot of phones or is in smart speakers and most smart tvs but they're in a lot of other things too I'm Andrea Smith, I'm a freelance technology journalist, and this is my first MediaTek Summit. Um, it's been fascinating to me because I realize after all these years of covering technology, consumer technology, and writing reviews, and looking at products and how they perform, I never really focused on what's inside the product. I never really thought about is it a, a media tech chip? Is it a Qualcomm chip? And what makes that difference? And I learned so much today about what MediaTek puts into designing its chips, the collaboration with partners, um, and the future focus of AI and looking to see how uh, the chips that are coming out now are going to be affecting and changing the products we'll have down the road. Hi, Mary Rivera from Pocket Now. Um, I think I'm fairly, it's, I'm fairly impressed with MediaTek because I've seen their journey since 2018 when I visited them for the first time, and you know, 5G was still not a thing. Uh, I found it pretty bold when they were like, "No, we're not going to do millimeter wave. Uh, we're we're still not ready for flagships." Um, and they even gave us a roadmap at the time, and it was Rick. That's when I met Rick, and I found it so interesting that absolutely everything that he mentioned in that roadmap we have seen executed today and for the past couple of years, from their incursion into 5G to the way that they're now incurring in flagships in a real way. I'm pretty curious about that Dimensity 9300 and the fact that it's going all big cores. I mean, MediaTek is known for their uh, power efficiency and yet they're being bold enough to say, no, we, we're gonna go for power and the power has got the efficiency we need anyways. And for the experts of power, I'm good for that. But, uh, you know, I, I also love everything that else that they're doing. I mean, it's crazy how many things are powered by MediaTek and we just didn't know about it. You know, so uh, I'm pretty impressed. I, I I actually wish that they had more notoriety than they currently have, but they're in so many products that they can't even talk about that they're in. Uh, we saw Sony last year, for example. That was like a big wow. Nobody was expecting that. So I'm, I'm pretty happy for them and I'm wishing them well. I hope that they continue in that. Hi, I'm at the MediaTek Summit. I think this is my fourth or fifth summit here, uh, and it's been interesting because uh, hearing from MediaTek and you know they're still going really strong. They said that they're in over two billion devices, which is insane. That's everything from smartwatches to routers, um, and they're also pushing now a really big emphasis on the fact that they're going to be in autos. Um, so I think it's really interesting how they're expanding into into new new products. Um, but it's also been interesting to hear that they are acknowledging the fact that they haven't had the best year despite being everywhere and in so many places. Um, but I do really much appreciate their transparency. Um, and they've also been talking a lot about AI, um, which you know is a really big catchphrase these days, but they had some interesting demos showcasing AI and how it's being implemented in smartphones and gaming. So I think they're in a really great trajectory. Um, one other thing that really I found interesting was that they were saying that chips are essentially the new currency, the new global currency, kind of like oil. And when you think about it, it, it pretty much obviously is because like everything nowadays needs a chip inside of it. Um, so it's been really fun to hear this different perspective. It's definitely very different from the MediaTek Summit that I experienced during the pandemic when things were really thriving and blowing up. 
Um, but either way, they're not going anywhere, and it's exciting to see where things will keep going with MediaTek. Hello, I'm Eliane Fiolet. I'm the co-founder and editor of uh, Uber Gizmo. It's, uh, it's an online media dedicated on, uh, about uh, consumer technology and consumer electronics. And today uh, was the first day of the MediaTek event. So what I, I love the most at the event is the announcement of the um, uh, Diamond City uh, 9300 uh, flagship processor for uh, uh, smartphones. For the first time, I think MediaTek uh, came with uh, a serious competitor to the Qualcomm flagship uh, with performance that are on par with the Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen, uh, Gen 3. And some area looks a bit better. Uh, we have to uh, check uh, much more the benchmark to, make, to, to be sure about that. The second uh, highlight I would like to talk about is the announcement of the partnership between Meta and MediaTek to build a uh, uh, AR or VR headset. Uh, that's, that's huge because um, uh, Meta is a software company mostly and they need a serious uh, partner uh, on the hardware side to build uh, even better um, uh, headset for VR and AR. Mm -hmm.